All right, guys, we're looking at an SSZ 14 Goodman heat pump. This one actually has no pressure on it. Uh, the supply house periodically gets in units that are damaged or have a problem. This one has a leak on the condenser u bend that just wasn't brazed in properly from the factory. So I, what I do is I go in and I buy a lot of these things and fix them and sell them sort of like a little bit of a discount uh, to my customers. Once it don't have the money for a brand new system, but once and it still has a warranty, and it's pretty much brand new. So in fact, this one's 14 Seer, R410A, and matched with the, the right air handler, or the right air handler with the TXV can actually get to be a 15 Seer. So it's actually a pretty good buy. So we're gonna take the panel off of this, and today we're gonna look at the capacitors we looked at the other day. We're looking at putting them in parallel, putting them in series, and the function that they would receive, how many microfarads, would you get from that particular combination? So we're going to see what an actual capacitor looks like in the field, how it's wired, and just explain the wiring of each capacitor so everyone can understand the functionality that it serves. We are in the control compartment of the heat pump now. There's our capacitor right there, dual run capacitor, called dual run because it has this function of two capacitors in it that have a shared common terminal. If you see the red and purple, that is a common. You'll see a yellow in the back there. That's a hermetic. We'll explain what that is. And a brown for the outdoor fan motor. There's our defrost board. It's a time-tested Goodman defrost board. Very simple. No frills, no bells, no whistles there. There's our single pole contactor. Called a single pole contactor because the switch is just on one of the poles. We see this is the switch inside of this uh, little encasement right here. The other side just runs straight through. It's a little difficult to see. We'll go over that on a different occasion, but for right now we're looking at the dual run capacitor. Here we have our capacitor. We have the purple and red going to our common terminal. We have our brown going to our fan terminal. And our yellow going to our hermetic terminal. Hermetic is hermetic compressor. It just refers to the fact that it's hermetically sealed. Now these wires have destinations. We're going to discuss where they're going, what their functions are for each of those motors. The first motor we'll discuss is the outdoor fan motor. As you can see, there's a conduit here. The wiring for the outdoor fan motor passes through that conduit. It goes down the back of this control and through the bottom. And in that conduit we'll have three wires. We'll have a purple, a brown, and a black. In regards to an outdoor fan motor, each one of those wires has a specific winding. Common is black for this particular motor. Brown is start. Purple is run. The run wires will go to the common on the dual run capacitor. But we can only see, we see two wires on that common terminal. Our purple goes to the fan motor. The purple carries one half of the voltage, 120 volts. The black, which is the common for the fan motor itself, actually heads to the defrost board where it can be shut off by this relay. This defrost relay can shut the fan off when the system is in defrost. And that's why that particular wire goes through there. It can be broken in between those two points. One leg is going to the outdoor fan motor, one leg is going to the contactor. Both the purple or run from the fan motor and the brown or the start from the fan motor go directly to the capacitor. The purple serves as one half of power or L2 120 volts and is jumpered via this red wire down to the top of the contactor here. That's where it receives one half of its power. The other 120 volts go directly to the other half of the contactor, which you might have a difficult time seeing. The black wires here that head up to the defrost board and then to the motor. That's just 240 volts of power. The remaining wire is to start which is brown that runs directly to the fan motor from here. 
and that completes the wiring for the outdoor fan motor. Now let's talk about the compressor. The yellow wire, or the start for the compressor, is very similar to the brown start from the fan motor. It runs directly to the motor itself. There's no stops, just directly there. Pretty simple. The common terminal where the run wires are held for the motors, as you see, there's no compressor wire here. But there is a red wire jumpering down to the contactor, which is where the compressor wire is at. So even though the compressor wire does not meet the capacitor directly on it, it is still communicating with it via a jumper, which is the same thing. At the top of the contactor, you see several black wires. One of those was the outdoor fan motor that went to the defrost board. The other is the common winding of the compressor, which is heading directly to the compressor. So no stops, it just heads directly there. And that is basically how our capacitor is wired. Whenever a motor is needed, the contactor closes, the capacitor supplies it with the correct, we'll call it boost, microfarad, allows it to begin turning and allows it to turn efficiently. If the capacitor is weak, the fan motor may turn at a lower RPM or not start at all. If the compressor side is weak, since we're talking about dual run with a shared common terminal, in a dual run capacitor, sort of a run capacitor for the compressor and a run capacitor for the fan motor, if the compressor side is weak, generally the compressor does not start at all. So you always have to uh, test your capacitors. Preventive maintenance is very important. Once they get to the tolerance, which is typically I've seen them range from 3% all the way up to 10% for AMRAD, I think. When you're out of the tolerance, change it. No question about it. If they say it's going bad, it's going bad. You don't want to be responsible for the thing not starting the week after you work on it. That is a look at the dual run capacitor and a Goodman 14 sear heat pump. It serves the same purpose in many heat pumps. If you had an ECM fan motor, you would not have a capacitor for it just like you wouldn't if it was a blower motor. But since these are both PSC motors, they use capacitors. Next time we'll look at a few other things, maybe a blower capacitor. But for this time, we're just looking at the dual run capacitor and a heat pump. Same function for an air conditioner, except you wouldn't have the defrost control board interrupting the common wire for the fan motor. I'll see you guys on the next one.